One of my favorite things to have in a house uh, is light switches in the jams of the closet doors. I'm always amazed why more builders don't put these in. Um, I guess I'm not really amazed. They're a pain in the neck. That's why. Uh, I've, I've installed them. I've retrofitted them into a couple of closets. Here's one. And you can see when the door closes, it hits this little switch, just like a refrigerator or a clothes dryer, turns the light off. Really nice. So there's no uh, wasted motion when you go in the closet, turn on the light, go out of the closet, turn off the light. And there is also no, um, no forgetting to turn the light off, which I think is a fire safety thing too. You know, there's a lot of, if, if your clothing is in contact with the light bulb, uh, there's a lot of fires that start because people leave the light on. Um, also, it's helped me close the closet doors because I'm one to leave doors open all over the place. And this morning I'm working on doing it in the last bedroom that didn't have one. So you can see here's what we got. We've got a closet with all the junk out of it. We've got the light switch here. We have the light. And speaking of fire safety, this was a really terrible spot to put the light because if you hang clothes there, then it's, you know, it's right there next to the rod. But there is no clothing stored in this closet. It's actually, um, it's it's just for books and pictures and stuff. So I'm not worried about it. But the other thing that I could have done is replace this with a fixture that encloses the bulb. But anyway, you can see there's the box in relation to the door jam, which fortunately is on the proper side of things. You want to, you know, the hinge side, obviously. And here's the hole that I've cut and the hole that I've drilled behind it for our little box here. And these multi-tools are the best thing ever. I don't know how I would have attempted to do this without one of these. Uh, I actually dulled the blade right out by cutting a hole in the plaster after I finished that because I'm also adding a receptacle. There's a printer that sits on here that's connected to the network and uh, I wanted to be able to plug it in. So anyway, uh, we've got that cut out with the multi-tool, did a beautiful job. However, I was not able to preserve the front edge of the door jam to conceal the box. So what I'm going to do, and I did this on the other ones, is just paint this edge of the box uh, a brown to match. And then it'll blend right in and, and you won't see it so badly. So anyway, there's that. And to fish the wire from, from here down to there, we're using armored cable, which doesn't fish terribly well. Uh, I took some uh, fishing line, because we are fishing here, and tied a knot on the end of it, dropped it through the knockout in this box, which I've already removed, and used a coat hanger with a hook bent on it. And we've got a little offset there so that you can just reach in, and it took about five minutes of fishing to reach that and pull it out. Uh, but now we can tie the either tie a pull string on or tie the, the cable itself on, as long as you're careful not to break your fishing line and pull that up uh, into the box. You want to have your connector already installed on the cable and then remove the lock nut so that when you fish the cable with the connector up in uh, to the box, uh, it, it seats itself into the box and you can pass the lock nut over the wires and screw it down and Bob's your uncle. A note on coat hangers. These white coat hangers make excellent hook tools and excellent locators. If you wanted to drill a hole through a floor and drop one of these in, a uh, straight part down, of course, then that will show you where the wall is down below. And that's actually the way I do central vacuum installations in existing homes. It works really well. A tiny little pinhole is a lot easier to patch than a misplaced uh, two and a half inch hole. Um, However, if you can get some of these coat hangers, uh, they're tan in color and they're usually wrapped in paper. The wire gauge is thick enough that you can drill with the coat hanger itself. You just uh, take the long straight portion, cut each end at an angle, and then you can chuck this in your drill and it'll go through hardwood and uh, subflooring, of course. And it leaves you almost a foot sticking through the floor down below so that you can see right where that wall is. And if you really want double uh, assurance, you can drill on both sides of the wall, and then down below, you've got right where that is. And if you drill a hole 
even if it's a mistake and you can't use your hole because you've got stuff in the way in the wall, uh, you are, have not made anything that you can see from, from above. And obviously you do that before you cut the hole in the wall. But anyway, I didn't have to do that for this. Uh, we're just adding this switch here. And as soon as I get the cable snaked in, the box will sit in there nicely and the cover will go on. And this cover holds the switch. And another note about these things, um, in the past I got the kind where the switch is plastic and the plunger has about a half inch of throw and you don't need to adjust it at all. This is a really small metal switch with uh, less than a quarter inch of throw. And the problem is you have to adjust the nut on the cover plate to get this to where it allows the door to close but still presses the switch and turns the light off and on. So I like the other kind better. I wish I would have gotten it this time. But uh, anyway, this is my project and this is how I'm doing it and hope this helps.